Did you know suspension bushings move? Well, duh, obviously. But there's some less obvious movement that could potentially cause problems if overlooked. And in this episode, we're going to learn how to control that movement. Don't move. Who wrote this? Welcome back, Garage Fabbers. And if you're new, welcome future Garage Fabbers. Today, we're continuing on with my wife's Mighty Max build, and we're currently changing the rear suspension from a triangulated four link to a parallel four link with a Watts link. The reason I'm using a parallel four link is I want the pinion angle to remain constant throughout travel so our drive shaft is always happy. The video explaining what makes drive shafts happy, what pisses them off, and why is in the making. Hang in there. I hate rules, but in order to have a properly working parallel four link, a couple rules need to be followed. We essentially need to create this rectangle with link bars. That is, the top and bottom link bars need to be the same length, and the ends of the bars need to be the same distance apart. I've decided to reuse the lower link bars that were made by the original builder of this truck. There's nothing special about them, except that they're already done. And anything that saves me time is pretty special. We're going to make link bars in the next video. So in that one, we'll talk about how to determine your link bar length, since not everyone is rebuilding somebody else's build like me. Since my bottom bars are done, my bar length is already determined for me. I just need to determine how far apart they'll be. I like 10 inches for a couple reasons. One, 10 inches is easy to math. Two, I've always spaced my bars 10 inches. Let me show you why. This is the Mustang axle I shortened to fit the Mighty Max. Go check out that video if you haven't already. The axle tube is three inches in diameter. That's a fairly average axle tube diameter. If you imagine looking at this axle tube from the side, we have a three inch circle. Let's draw it out so you don't have to imagine. Here's the link bar ends that I generally use. The outer sleeve diameter is two inches. In most link bar setups, other than a two link, you'll have a bushing on top of the axle and another on bottom. The polyurethane in this style bar end flexes a bit, so you should probably mount the bushings away from the axle tube so you don't have any metal on metal rubbing. A half inch should be plenty for that. So with this setup, we have six inches between the upper and lower bar ends. That would work, but let's talk more about that polyurethane flex. When you mash on the accelerator pedal, the wheels spin forward and this axle assembly will try and spin backward. This backward rotation pulls back on the upper link bars and pushes forward on the lowers. Fun fact, in a link bar setup, the bottom bars alone are what's actually pushing the car forward under acceleration. And when you hit the brakes, everything reverses. The axle tries to spin forward, pushing forward on the upper bars and pulling on the lowers. So again, the lower bars are what's doing the work in slowing the vehicle down. The upper bar's job is mainly preventing the axle from spinning. Under acceleration and braking, the bushings will deflect a little, meaning they'll squish. Let's say each of the two bushings on each link bar deflects a sixteenth of an inch. That's a total of an eighth inch movement. Under acceleration, the upper bushings deflect rearward an eighth inch, and the lowers deflect forward the same. That tiny movement, believe it or not, is changing your pinion angle slightly. Side note, this quarter inch of movement is just a random estimate, as in I made it up for this example. Different bushing materials compress differently. Rubber will squish a bunch, allowing a lot of movement. Polyurethane flexes a little less, Delrin even less, and Heim joints pretty much no flex. So don't dwell on the specific measurements. Just be in awe when you see how the distance between the upper and lower bushings affects pinion angle change. It's cardboard model time. If the bushings are evenly spaced away from the axle and they're mounted on the center line of the axle, meaning they're not offset over here or over here, any play in the bushings allows the axle to rotate a little on an imaginary axis right in the center. These three lines represent bushing deflection. The middle line being the bushings are under no pressure, totally relaxed. Under acceleration, the eighth inch of movement in the bushings allows the axle to rotate backward a small amount. And under braking, the axle rolls forward a little. Notice that when the axle rolls, the pinion angle is changing. I placed a protractor by the drive shaft flange so we can see how many degrees the pinion angle is allowed to move. Two degrees each direction gives us four degrees of total pinion angle change. This is with the bushings spaced six inches apart. Let's go crazy and space the bushings out 36 inches. This is dumb. 
Don't do that. Unless you're running 40 inch wheels, your link bar tabs will be scraping on the ground. But look what happened to the total pinion angle change. The same amount of bushing deflection only allows for a half degree in each direction. That's just one degree of total pinion angle change. Since a 36 inch spacing really is ridiculous, let's check out the 10 inch spacing I usually use. With that, we get about two degrees of total movement. Once again, we're talking about pinion angle and nobody knows why. My apologies, I'm currently building a machine for a video that will demonstrate why pinion angle is so important. It will blow your mind, I promise. Hit the subscribe button and the bell and YouTube will let you know when that video finally drops. Two degrees of movement is generally okay because this slight misalignment of the drive shaft only lasts for a moment under heavy acceleration or hard braking. The rest of the time, the bushings relax and the pinion angle returns to normal. Constant drive shaft misalignment is what we need to worry about most, which is why I suggest using the parallel four link on vehicles with adjustable suspension. Here's a super fast review. Various bushing styles have more give than others under pressure, but you can also minimize this movement by spacing out your link bars correctly. The more space between the upper and lower bushings, the less your axle will be able to rotate. That said, if for whatever reason you can't have 10 inches between the bushings, cars for example generally have a lot less room than trucks, you may want to opt for Delrin bushings or even heim joints. Now that I have my bushing spacing figured out, it's time to make some link bar tabs for the front cross member. Subscribe right now so you don't miss how we make multiple identical parts with just a grinder. Until then, my friends, keep moving forward.